Now, I've done a lot of videos on cortisol, especially as it relates to the adrenal body type or the adrenal gland, but I haven't done any videos on how to lower it with foods. So that's the topic of today. I'm not gonna get into the benefits of lowering cortisol because you probably already know that. You wouldn't be here if you didn't know about cortisol. But cortisol is the main stress hormone. There's another hormone-like uh, compound called adrenaline. It's not a true hormone, it's a neurotransmitter, and both adrenaline and cortisol work together. And so if you ever look at the adrenal gland, you have an inside and an outside. The inside releases adrenaline and the outside releases cortisol. And both of those compounds have crossover functions, but in summary, they adapt the body to a stress state. Now, the thing you need to know is that the body does not know the difference between mental stress and physical stress. It reacts with these hormones and all the adaptations that occur with it for all stresses, but mental stress and physical stress are not necessarily differentiated. So nowadays we're not being chased by a tiger, right? Trying to oh, no. get our food. We are hit with a lot of chronic mental stress, which creates the same effect on these two hormones. And yes, you can do a blood test or a, a saliva test for cortisol, which is quite extensive because you would have to test it every four hours. So you're basically getting up in the middle of the night and you're putting your saliva in this little tube, and then you have to send it out to the lab. There is a much better way of indirectly um, getting an idea of where your cortisol is at using something called heart rate variability, which measures the autonomic nervous system. I may have information on that, on how you can actually have your own device and how to measure it yourself. But today we're just gonna talk about what foods you should be eating or avoiding to really optimize your stress hormones. When we're dealing with the autonomic nervous system, we're dealing with a system that is on automatic and uh, it's composed of mainly two things, the sympathetic, fight or flight, and the parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. So anytime that sympathetic system is activated, by anything like mental stress, cortisol also gets activated. So the, the probably one of the most important things to know before we even dive into this is the condition called diabetic dysautonomia, which basically means your autonomic nervous system is messed up because of this high level of sugar in your bloodstream. And that creates a lot of problems with all the different autonomic nerves, especially the peripheral nerves, the, the nerves in your, your feet and your hands and other nerves too, like your vagus nerve that goes to your digestive system. And so there's a lot of fancy words to describe those conditions too, like one being gastroparesis, another being diabetic autonomic neuropathy. All that means is your nerves are getting messed up because you have high blood sugars because you are diabetic. So the first thing to know is that sugar and starches really mess up that autonomic nervous system and they alter for the worse your cortisol as well as adrenaline. In other words, sugar and starches keep you in a stress mode. Now, of course, if we look at the opposite diet to a high sugar, high starch diet, that would be a ketogenic diet. And there's an interesting study, I think it's the only study out there, that looked at very low calorie and a low carb ketogenic plan. And so they combine a low calorie, which could describe uh, doing like OMAD, one meal a day, and you're also doing low carb you greatly support the autonomic nervous system, okay? So in other words, if you have too much sympathetic nervous system, um, it can help balance that out. There's some other research that shows how fasting can support the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is probably why people feel very calm when they start getting into this wonderful fasting uh, state because the parasympathetic nervous system is kicked in. And so when you go on a ketogenic diet and you cut out the carbs, and you also combine fasting, your uh, mood changes. You can go from an irritable state or an anxiety state to a calm state because of the shift in this parasympathetic sympathetic balance, as well as the cortisol being lowered. In fact, my cortisol was very, very high at one time, and that was at the peak of when I was doing all the carbs, okay? Like I'm talking massive carbs. To support this autonomic nervous system to help balance the stress state, you definitely need um, B12. And what foods would be high in B12? All the animal uh, products, red meats, fish, and organ meats, because a B12 deficiency can cause a problem with that part of the autonomic nervous system. The next thing to talk about is this parasympathetic nervous system. That's your recovery system, the system that controls um, sleeping and digesting and 
being calm. And the neurotransmitter uh, behind that system is called acetylcholine. And so the precursor for acetylcholine is choline. And guess what food has the highest amount of choline? You guessed it, egg yolks. So eggs would be a really good thing to consume to support the lowering of the stress and the lowering of cortisol and adrenaline. But also you can get choline in organ meats, okay? Like liver, et cetera. Other two key nutrients to support uh, acetylcholine would be vitamin B1 and vitamin B5, both of them. And you can get both of those naturally from nutritional yeast, as well as sunflower seeds and many other foods. And this is why when people have that nutritional yeast, maybe they put it on their salad, uh, as part of the dressing with the olive oil and the vinaigrette or ranch, whatever. Or they might just consume it in a tablet form, but when they consume that nutritional yeast, they feel calmer about four or five minutes later. But to have enough acetylcholine for your parasympathetics, you need B1, B5, and choline. The other two key minerals that support the parasympathetics as well as calming down the sympathetics as well as lowering cortisol is both potassium and magnesium. Both of these minerals are physiological relaxers, okay? So they calm the body down. And it just so happens when people go through a lot of stress, all that stress can actually deplete these two minerals, leaving you deficient. And so does sugar as well. But taking more potassium and magnesium can calm you down. It'll help the rest state, it helps lower cortisol, so the food that has the most potassium and magnesium together are deep leafy green vegetables, as in big salads, as in what I recommend in a healthy keto plan. All right, the next nutrient that if deficient can create a big problem on the autonomic nervous system is vitamin D3. So you can get vitamin D3 free from the sun, okay? You can also get it from fatty fish like salmon while caught. But what's unique about vitamin D and cortisol is this. Vitamin D is not really a vitamin. It's like a hormone. And it has very similar functions to cortisol. And when you raise cortisol, you tend to deplete vitamin D. People that have high cortisol levels where they're stressed out usually have low uh, vitamin D. And so to create a very similar effect, okay, for stress, uh, for inflammation, for sleeping, you can take vitamin D. So vitamin D can help uh, modulate or regulate that cortisol. Now, when we talked about the parasympathetic nervous system, that is um, a part of the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve connects from your brain to your digestive system and other visceral organs as well. So you can actually support and improve that vagus nerve by doing something to your gut, by fortifying it with probiotics, Okay, probiotic foods, which I will put some research down below in the description, but sauerkraut, kefir, pickles, kimchi, and probiotic supplements for the gut, and that can support the parasympathetic, which could explain why some people sleep really good after they consume a probiotic or kefir uh, before bed. So that was six foods that support lowering cortisol and adrenaline to help you cope. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side. Now, to be complete about this topic, there are other things you need to do to lower stress. And if you haven't seen this very popular video on how to reduce uh, cortisol using other methods than food, watch it. I put it up right here.